An infrared LED is connected to port 1, bits 0 and 3. Bit 3 is driven to ground as an output. That simply a, a provides a, a ground that's on this uh, header strip because there's not a, a ground pin on there. And then bit 0 is the input to the hardware timer counter unit and it also has the pull-up resistor enabled. And this LED is reverse biased. So we've measured the voltage across it. You can see it's going to be approximately equal to our supply rail, which is, you know, about three and a half volts. And that's what we want for this application. Now, if it were forward biased, we would see a much lower voltage. And of course, a forward bias LED actually glows when current flows through it. And when it's forward biased, see about one volt, which is typical for an infrared LED. That's not the configuration we want. We're not using this as an emitter. We're using it as a detector. So we want it reverse biased. And when it's reverse biased, whenever strong infrared light hits this, it's going to produce current in opposition to what's provided by the pull-up resistor. And the input to the counter is going to go low. And then when the infrared light disappears, it's going to go high, and that's going to cause the counter to increment. And it doesn't matter if that counter increments on the rising or falling edge, because every pulse is going to produce both a rising and falling edge. Also, the jumper for the onboard LED on pin uh, uh, bit zero has been moved to the right to disable that LED so it doesn't interfere. So now if we point a remote at the infrared LED, and it has to be reasonably well aligned, you can see the green LED here flashes because it's been programmed to turn on that LED whenever the count of the hardware counter changes. And it checks that about once every 130 microseconds. Now the sensitivity of this is not very good. If we back away about, yeah, a little over an inch, it doesn't work. Also moving side to side doesn't work either. Uh, the advantage of that is this is quite immune to interference. Uh, the disadvantage, obviously, is you have to have some reasonably good alignment between the infrared LED on the remote and the infrared LED used as a sensor.